What's up, everyone? Mike Gore Hickman here, founder of PainterGrowth.com, and you are listening to, watching all the things, the Painter Growth Podcast. And in this awesome episode, self-described as awesome, y'all are going to be enjoying a private, what do I want to call it? Masterclass? Webinar? A private event that I did, that I hosted with Service Fusion. Now, Service Fusion was um, kind enough to um, advertise that we were going to be doing this um, on their socials, and we advertised it as well. And I put a lot of time and energy uh, into this presentation. It's actually a presentation I've never presented before. It's all completely brand new, and I think you are really going to like it. And the whole concept of it is how you can smash your winter season and how to use the profits from your summer production to actually make your winter season busier than your summer. So I hope that actually before I get into that, the one reason why I think that this is so awesome and such a good topic is because whatever city you're in, there's probably a painting company that's 10 times bigger than you. So why can't your summer be twice as big as, or your winter be twice as big as your summer right now? Like there's literally no reason. The only reason is your own ability to get leads and close them. So buckle up, listen to this. I hope you get a ton of value out of this. It's gonna be a little different than your average everyday podcast, but I think you're really, really gonna like it. That's why I'm posting it here. So with that being said, on with the show. How to use your busy season to scale and grow your off season. Hoping you guys can walk away with some really actionable tips. So the reason for this presentation is so your slow season is busier than last year's. And in fact, if done right, your slow season could very well be busier than your busy season. Yes, things do kind of come and go with the seasons. However, um, with the right strategies and with the right processes and with the right mindset, um, you can scale a business in the winter. Think about it this way, whatever, whatever city you're in, there is a painting company that's 10 times bigger than you that does 10 times more work than you in the winter. So for you to do twice as much work as you're doing right now in the summer, in the winter has nothing to do with how much work is available. All it has to do with is with, is with how much work of the work uh, that's out there is you're getting. And so if you're doing a 50, if you're doing 20,000 a month, there's for sure 40,000 a month of work in the winter. <laughs> Just like, are you the one getting it? Um, Andy, will this help if you're just starting out? Absolutely, 100%. Um, glad that you're here because um, starting out your painting business um, with the right business knowledge is going to allow you to get ahead so much for, so much quicker than spinning your wheels for a couple of years, not knowing you know which way's up. So yeah, glad you're here. I want to teach you some new strategies so you can take action in a new way and actually learn something. And so what does it really mean to learn something? To learn is to gain new information, right? New information in and change your behavior as a result. So my goal in this presentation is help you actually change your behavior so you have that ability to scale. If you don't change your behavior, your business won't change. Simple as that. One thing that I want to do is I like to see the little slideshow uh, presenter view. There we go. Got my little presenter view thing. You can see what slides are coming up next. Um, cool. I'm also going to be giving you a bunch of free tools and resources along the way. You can download and start using immediately. And so you just have to just wait and I'll pop them in the chat when we're ready. Now, significant growth is the goal. So if you take what you learned today, uh, and that helps you go from, you know, 20 K per month, to 60 K per month, you know, I will have done my job. I believe that anyone and everyone is capable of running a seven figure painting business. If they put the right amount of effort into the right things, right? It's not about working harder. I don't doubt that you work your ass off. You probably work harder than anyone you know. But if you're not working on the right things, then your growth is going to be stagnated. Your business is not going to be going in the right direction. So who am I? Mike or Hickman. Um, got two beautiful daughters. I used to be a painting contractor. I grew my business to a multiple seven-figure run rate by the time I was 22. Married. Um, yeah, two little girls. Family is always first for me lifelong entrepreneur. And at Painter Growth here, we are the fastest growing and most successful business training and coaching organization in the painting space. We worked with over 600 painting contractors. We have exclusive partnerships with Sherwin-Williams, Painting Contractor Association, and many more. 
Um, and uh, yeah, we're really trying to bridge the gap in business education in the painting space since it is so desperately needed. Um, cool. So why are you here? You are here to solve a problem. People without problems don't solve, we don't attend webinars. So you want to prepare for your slow season, but in reality, you probably have one in four problems. One in four problems. You either don't have enough leads to grow your business. You aren't able to close jobs at a high enough rate. You can't find reliable painters. Or you're too busy working in the business all the time to ever work on the business. Now, I want you guys to find the Q&A and just throw a one, two, three, or four, whichever one best describes you. So one being you don't have enough leads. Two, you can't close your jobs. Three, you can't find painters. Or four, you're too busy all the time to get anything done. Okay, a bunch of ones. So a bunch of leads. Okay, anyone else? Just find that Q&A. Cool. Okay, lots of ones. Hmm, surprising. Don't have enough leads to grow your business. One and four. Not enough leads. Too busy. Okay, a bunch of fours as well. Cool. Mike, Chase, three and four. All right. Well, let's try to solve some of those problems today. Regardless of what your biggest challenge is, the outcome you want is the same. You want to book more jobs, produce more revenue, make more money, have more freedom. Fair enough? Cool. And once you have the tools to be able to solve those problems and how to use them, you will solve them and they'll disappear. And then being in business, your business will grow and a new set of challenges will present itself. And it's your ability to continue solving problems and, and overcoming challenges that will allow you to eventually grow your business. You'll be able to book leads and jobs and you'll be able, and, as you need to hit your sales goals. Um, like John here, this is actually pretty cool. Um, I just got like a couple of quick uh, stories here to make sure sound is being shared. So John, uh, like, you know, we're talking about slow season, right? So John joined our program in January in Oregon. So like rainy, winter, sleet. He had zero jobs booked. He followed our program studiously. And I say studiously because he jumped in. He went through everything. He booked 60K in the first 30 days and completely changed the outlook and trajectory of his business. And I have like a 45 second little clip of him. 41 uh, seconds. I had zero work booked in January. Uh, and it was the week before January. So, you know, December 28th, 29th, 30th, somewhere in there is when I booked my first tiny little $2,000 job uh, for January just to get my guys painting on January 2nd. Um, and then now uh, we're in February. Looking back at January's numbers, it was my highest production month uh, since I started my business. So, how much would you say, just numbers wise, have you booked in the last five weeks? Well, there's one week I turned in over $100,000 in estimates. Um, in the last five weeks, uh, what I've actually booked, uh, easily 60000 Going from literally nothing to 60000 in bookings? Yeah. Not, not too bad. So that was John, which was pretty cool. Um, and then you'll also be able to find, recruit, and hire the best painters and have them actually want to work for you. So like Richie, he joined our program in October. Again, going into the slow season. As a third generation painter, his father was a painter, his grandfather was a painter. He was on the tools his whole life. Um, he followed our training within three months. So October through February, oh, that's a little bit more than three months, November, December, January. That's like, yeah, it's like five months. He added five full-time painters and scaled his business from 12K per month to over 55K per month. 46 seconds. I mean, it's amazing. Like I can, you know, I could take my son and pick him up from school. I can, I can come home for lunch, you know, and like hang out here and, and, and be able to spend time with my, my girl and, and and be able to not have to worry so much. The benefits for my for my body, like I've been in manual labor for the entirety of my life. Working in front of a computer is much different. It definitely does feel better. I don't feel so drained all the time. So I want to say like the first month, it was my highest month yet in the first month. I think I booked like 22. So I would say over the 90 days, it was probably 70. And now here I am, five guys, and I'm booking out 30, 40 grand worth of work. And I didn't think any of that was, not that it wasn't possible, but I just thought it was so far away. Work, work, hard, work smarter, not harder, you know? And that's, I mean, it's amazing. Like I can, Ooh, you know, I could take my the next one. There we go. Cool. And then also being able to make more money from your business and finally be in control of your time. I and this is cool. This is Logan. Um, I don't have like a 
preview, but this is just, uh, this is actually just recently. This as spring. soon as I started implementing just the small things, like selling, boom, 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 boom. And it was, uh, it was insane. $75,571. In uh, <laughs> 10 weeks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which is, which is more than you produced all year last year. All year. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> it's so exciting, man. You know, like this is, this has changed my family and, and this is the dead season. So once spring kicks, I'm anticipating it, uh, an insane summer. How do you feel about the, the future of your business? Beyond excited, like, um, relieved, excited, you know, um, safe, um, man, the future, the I got big plans. Yeah. We, we, we feel excited, comfortable. It's wild how your life can change in less than two months. It's insane. I didn't think this would happen. Once you guys laid out the game plan, it was like, all I got to do is run the ball now. As soon as I started implementing. Cool. So uh, guys, just throw five in the Q&A if you would love one of those outcomes. Let's just see. Let's see you go in the Q&A. Uh, throw five if you would love one of those outcomes, any of those guys. Cool. All right. We're all on the same page. Well, let's see what we can do today. <laughs> there we go. You guys have blown it up. Love it. So roadmap, using profits to fund your growth setting your vision and your three-year goal. And I'm going to why that's so important. Determining your one-year goal, figuring out your quarterly rocks, breaking that down into weekly to-dos. And ultimately, we'll start here, using your profits to fund your growth. So being able to scale your business comes down to two fundamental things. Number one, knowing your numbers, but then number two, having the systems in place to affect and impact those numbers, right? And we're gonna focus a lot on knowing your numbers to drive your own behavior. And we can't cover everything in business in you know 60 minutes or whatever, but we can make some progress. And I'm, I've, I've really tried to distill this down to the most important things that will allow you to move your business as much forward in the shortest amount of time into this presentation. But in, or, if, in order to know how to get your slow season busy, you need to know where you're at right now and where you're going, right? And some key numbers that you can find out right now will help you determine your plan for the year. Combine that with some straightforward strategies for implementing that plan, and then you will have a lights out approach. So why do we start with goal setting, right? Why is goal setting such an important? You're like, oh man, I just need some, I need some jobs, right? Well, why is goal setting so important? Imagine going on a road trip without a destination in mind, just getting in your car and driving. Regardless of where you want to go, you will not end up in the right spot. Just like I said, a lot of you guys said four earlier, like you're just too busy, all of the time to work on your business. And a lot of that is because you don't understand the priorities that you need to be focusing on in order to grow that. And by having that roadmap, by knowing where you want to go, it's going to be a lot easier on a daily basis to understand if what you're working on is the most important thing that you need to be. You need a clear path in order to achieve what you really want to achieve. Working harder is not going to get you closer to goal if you're working on the wrong things. So, Think about it for a second. What is your three-year, big, hairy, audacious goal? Where do you want your business to be in three years if everything could go according to plan? And I'm not just talking about money. While money is important, it's definitely not everything. And, and depending on the other, these other aspects of it, um, the amount of top-line revenue is really going to change on your goal depending on what you want with your time. So like, what do you want your time to look like? How much are you actually spending in your business? What is the role that you're, you're doing? Are you painting? Are you running production? Are you doing sales? Are you passive, right? And depending on what you want to do with your time, what makes you happy, that's going to determine how much sales you do. Family, right? What does your family look like? Do you, are you wanting to have more kids? Do you want to add to your family? Do you want to spend more time with your kids? Do you want to have breakfast together every day? Do you want to, you know, be able to drive your kids to all the sports that they have? And like business, what does the business relationship in your household look like? Are you just working on your painting business? Are you investing in other companies? Are you consulting with your friends and their businesses? And so now that you kind of see where to focus and what you need to think about when it comes to goals, let's apply that to our own business. So what is important to you? Let's start with money. How much do you want to make monthly like just you don't have to put, write it in just think about it for yourself what would be a great amount of money to make every single month as profit then time how many hours per week do you want to work right just in total do you want to work 10 hours per week 20 hours a week maybe you're happy working 40 hours a week it gives you some purpose so i'm going to take this a goals worksheet here and i'm going to put it in the chat 
Um, so I'm going to send it to everyone here. So if y'all can see it, um, it's going to look like this. And this is a goals worksheet. And what I want you to do is go to the top and hit file and make a copy. Okay. So if you go file, make a copy, you're going to be able to make a completely private version just for you that nobody else will be able to see. Okay. Then we're going to work on this together. So the first is right at the top three heg. So what do you want your business to look like three years from now? What do you want your money goal to be? What do you want your time goal to be? And what do you want your family goal to be? So you can just write that down. If you have a minute, if you're able to do that right now, we can give you a minute to do it. So family, what does your work-life balance look like? How much are you working? What is your role in the company? How old are your kids going to be? What trips do you want to take them on? And then once you have those things written down, look at them and decide if achieving those things would truly make you happy. Okay, so just take a minute here. Hopefully you're actually following along because it's going to be a really valuable exercise because once you get off this webinar, you know, you've probably got a painter who's calling you, customers calling you, you got to run to the paint store, you got to do this, you got to do that, right? Things are going to get in the way. So let's use this time. Let's do something a little bit different. Make a copy of this. Looks like a bunch of you are in it. And just write it down. You know, in three years, I want my business to blank. I want to be doing this much revenue. I want to be making this much money. I want to have this type of impact. Okay. Then down here, what I want you to do is fill in the white cells. So there's 14, 16, 21, 22, and 27. And so the first one, I guess, on 21, how much revenue did you do over the last 12 months? 22 is what, what percent growth do you want to achieve year over year? On line, line 14, how much sales do you want to be doing in uh, three years from now? And then you have your average job size. So what is your the average, the size of your average job? Uh, sorry, we uh, we can't, L, L Tunzi, Tunesi, we cannot, I can't send it to your email right now. Um, you just have to log in and, and uh, make a copy of it. I can send it out afterwards um, to everyone attending here. So as you update these numbers, all the gray ones are going to update and it's going to let you know what your business needs to look like in order to achieve it. Oftentimes, we don't know what our business even needs to look like in order to hit a goal and we just start working as hard as we can. So for example, for a painting company to do a million dollars per year, that's 83, um, sorry, 83,000 a month. Now, if your average job size is 4,500, that's 222 jobs a year or 19 jobs a month. And in order to accomplish that, you only need 5.7 painters. Like you need six full-time painters to produce a million dollars per year if your charge rate is 85 bucks an hour. Right? In the Q&A, anyone, like to produce a million dollars with six painters, like did that seem like less than you thought, the same or you know, about the same as you thought or, or more than you thought? like fewer painters, just if anyone's got an idea there, just to kind of feel where you're at. Personally, when I go through this exercise and I think about that, it's like that feels like not a lot of painters to be able to accomplish a million dollars. So to run a seven figure business, we just need two crews, a crew of two and a crew of three. Cool. Once you have your goals, then we'll make those real with numbers. Like I said, in these cells, I want you to update the white ones and leave the gray ones blank. And then you're at the very bottom there, um, marketing numbers. So we have your close rate. So approximately what is your close rate in your business? You know, out of every 10 estimates that you do, how many of them do you close? And then what's your lead conversion rate? And what this is going to do is, is show you how many jobs you need a month, how many estimates you need a month, and also how, all the way down to how many leads you need a week. So in order to do this business, we just need 11 leads a week. It's not too bad. Then as we go a little bit lower, once you have your one year figured out, when your plan figured out, we'll need to break that down over the next 90 days. Doesn't have to be linear, but it does have to be progressive. Meaning if I want to double my business, I don't need to grow by 25% a quarter. Like it can be, it can be progressive. It, you know, as we get, we accelerate as we go. 
So if we want to go from 20,000 per month to 50,000 per month in the next 12 months, maybe we need to get about 25% of the way there in the next 90 days. So specifically, what does that look like? Current 20K, goal 50K, gap is 30K, 25% of the way there is 7.5K. So that means a 90 day goal, we want to be doing 27.5 a month. So how does that break down? Uh, 27K, 27.5K at a $4,500 average job size is six jobs a month. At a 40% close rate, that's 15 estimates. At a 70% lead conversion rate, that's 22 leads. So for us to get to that point where we're doing 27.5 a month, we just need 22 leads per month. It's not too bad. So specifically, what types of marketing do we need to be doing to get those 22 leads per month? Then make that your monthly goal and yet you let yourself be satisfied when you hit it. So at those numbers, one of the calculations that I had inside the formula was an $85 an hour charge rate. And so what an $85 an hour, what a charge rate means is basically in total, how much does our company charge out per hour? So if we have a $10,000 job and it takes us a hundred hours, then that's a hundred hour, hundred dollar an hour charge rate. A hundred times a hundred is 10,000. And so that includes paint, labor, overhead, everything. So we want our charge rate to be kind of between 75 and $90 per hour to be healthy. So how you can figure that out is like, look at the last job that you did. How much was it for and how many hours did it take? Take the top line number and divide it by how many hours it took. That'll get you your charge rate. So um, to make sure we have an $85 charge rate and 1.88 painters, what are the things that we need to do? We need to track financials diligently. So make sure we're job costing. We need to hire or retain painters looking at our plan, knowing how many hours we want to produce every month. We need to make sure we have the right number of painters who can actually produce that work. And so what does that look like? <laughs> All right, we're getting in the weeds here. What are we really doing, right? We're setting goals. We're breaking them down in a time delineated way and we're putting real numbers to them. And once we get our exact specific plan and all the numbers associated with it, we can start taking action towards that, right? Now that you have your sheet, you have your goals, we need the tasks associated with what we're doing uh, and our weekly numbers. So figuring out your tasks, we have the next activity on our sheet, which is called the three by three activity. And this is pretty cool. For the 90 day goal to happen, no matter what, what are the three most important projects we need to complete? And then we're going to break those each down into three actionable tasks so we can complete those three projects. So if we look at our 90 day goals, what are the things that are going to be the hardest for you to accomplish? And let's focus on those. What's the risk and what are the actions needed to mitigate or overcome those risks? So right at the bottom of this uh, goals webinar worksheet, we have our priority one, priority two, and priority three. So if we know, just like uh, I think a bunch of you guys said, like leads is going to be your biggest challenge. So we need to get more leads. And so if we look at our plan and we need to get 11 leads per week over the next 90 days, what are the strategies, or what, not even the strategies, but are the activities that we need to do to make sure that we can get those leads? It's like, okay, well, I want to get, we need to get door hangers printed and distribute 5,000 of them. Right, so finish the rough design, send to a designer, send to Vistaprint, order 5,000, set up marketing route with a marketer. Okay, then you set your due dates for those. What's another priority? Okay, we know leads are still going to be challenging. So let's um, let's go through a Facebook ad training course and launch Facebook ads. And then we're going to go, and maybe the next one is going to be set up a door-to-door -door marketing team. Okay, and then, and then you're going to break that down into subtasks and due dates that you can actually schedule in your calendar. Because in order to get leads and to get, you know, what we would call like an input into the business, we need to be doing output. And so we can't just wait for the phone to ring. For the input, for the, um, the input is directly proportioned to the output that we do. So if we want to get 20 leads per week, we want to do the actions that would make it unreasonable for us not to get those 20 leads. So instead of just doing marketing for one hour per week or two hours per week or wondering why the phone's not working or just, you know, whatever, like, let's just get out there and get it done. Let's go door to door. Let's talk to property managers. Let's pick up the phone. Let's do callbacks. Um, let's go to the paint store. Let's talk, let's distribute, you know, a hundred cards a day. Like do, what actions would it make it unreasonable for you to fail?
and do twice that amount. So you don't have to do this right now, but I want you to think about it and fill out this three by three, add due dates on each task, and then add them to your calendar. And when you're doing your, like you have the, your task and then you have your three subtasks, I want you to make sure that those three subtasks are small enough so that they are immediately actionable. Because if you put something in your calendar or you try to schedule a task for yourself and it's a little bit too big and hairy of a task. So if you, if you set a task in your calendar, so you do block scheduling or whatever, and you put like a two hour time block for next week that says, set up a door to door marketing team. Right. And then like the week and a half goes by and you get to next Thursday and you come to the task in your calendar at two o'clock where it says set up a door to door marketing team. And you're like, I don't really know how to do that. I don't even know where to start. So I'm just going to do this other thing that's like easier to do. And it's a quicker win and not require as much brain energy. Right. You're not going to do it. You're not going to do the hard thing if it's too big of a task. So how can you break that down, that task into smaller subtasks and then schedule those in your calendar? So instead of like hire a door-to-door -door marketing team, maybe the task is um, use ChatGPT to help me create a hiring ad for a marketer. Okay. Uh, go online and download some door-to-door -door marketing scripts and print them out. Go knock on 50 doors and test those scripts to make sure that it works. And then maybe another one is um, conduct five interviews for door-to-door -door marketers once you've done those other things. So now when you get to next Thursday and you see, okay, use ChatGPT to create a hiring ad, it's like, all right, that is easy to do. That is actionable. Let's get that done. Once you know your top three projects, now you need to stay accountable to our weekly numbers. So how do you know if the tasks you're creating are small enough? Like I said, you need to be able to easily schedule each one of those tasks into your calendar and get them done in one single work block. Cool. Now, this next thing that I'm going to show you is your weekly number. So we actually have, if you can see, we have three different, uh, four different tabs here. So we've just gone through the goals so far. The next one that I want to show you here is your weekly numbers. And so this is really cool. So what you're going to do is you're going to fill in one, two, three, four, sales. So you're going to put in your sales goal, what you want to accomplish over the next year, how much sales you want to do, what your average job size is. Don't include those like big, you know, commercial jobs. You got one of once, like just do your regular residential, whatever slippage. So the number of estimates that are leads that do not turn into estimates, right? It's kind of the opposite of estimate conversion rate. And then your sales ratio. So what number, how many, uh, what's your close rate basically? So you fill in those four, four, um, five, uh, sorry, four spots, one, two, three, four, and your whole spreadsheet will update for you. So if we go to 500,000, our slippage is 40, say we're really good at sales, our close rate's 50 and our average job size is 5,500. Well now, oh, and then the last thing we need to do is update this week. Actually, I think I already did it for you. So it starts on uh, this coming Sunday. So, um, Every week, how many leads do we need? The cumulative number. How many estimates do we need? Then we total number. How many booked jobs do we need? How much booked revenue do we need? And then we also have our produ production over here. So you guys can use this and you can use this to stay on track. So you get to, you know, September 15th and you're like, all right, I need five leads this week. Okay. And then four estimates and two booked jobs. And then as you go, you're going to be able to see if you're ahead of the plan or behind the plan just on an ongoing basis. Um, I just want to get kind of a quick pulse here. Throw one in the chat if you think using this consistently would would make your business a little bit more organized. And put a two if you don't think it would. If you think like it would just be a waste of time. Cool. Gerson, Aura, pumping out the ones. David. Cool. Mauricio, nice. So the thing about you know spreadsheets like these or activities like these is that they're only as good as... <laughs> How do I even say that? They're only as good. They're only good if you use them, right? You can have the best tools in the world, but if you're not using them, then they're just going to sit in your Google Drive and collect, you know, metaphorical dust. So you need to have accountability and support to be able to use these things. Update the numbers, reflect your business and, and your start date to get your plan. 
And then you need to check in on the spreadsheet daily, daily, one minute a day. Who here has one minute a day? You can find one minute a day to ensure that you're on track for your, with your leads. Andy, you got one minute a day. <laughs> Heck yeah. Your leads, your estimates, your book jobs, booked revenue, and production numbers. And if you fall off track, you can check in on where you fell off track. Was it lead flow? Was it conversion rate? Was it average job size? And all of a sudden, you can pinpoint what you need to work on instead of just guessing. All right. So now we talked about the front end stuff. And now we're talking about the back end stuff. Now this is about production. So having your production organized is vital to be able to pull this off. Keeping one to two crews organized with a Google Calendar is pretty easy. And that's what most people do is they use Google Calendar or they use Drip Jobs or something like that. And they organize their production schedule. But once you get to three, four, five, six, seven crews, it becomes a lot more challenging because instead of just three to five jobs per month that you're organizing, you're now organizing 20 to 30 jobs per month and logistics become real. So you need tools that are scalable. You need a simple yet powerful tool to help you do that and stay organized. So this was a snapshot of my production schedule um, during my painting business. As you can see, we're organizing six crews at a time. Um, we input the jobs here, the re revenue value. We can see how much each crew is producing each week. Um, the green means are they movable jobs? The yellows, there's some restrictions. The red is they're very not movable jobs. And we can just literally play chess with our production schedule. So I have a very easy template for you to use right here, production schedules in that same spreadsheet that you now have. And as you book jobs, you're going to put them here in this final one called book jobs. So you're going to book your jobs. You're going to put them here, your revenue, the hours it's going to take, expected production date, lead source. It's going to tell you how many days for either one, two, three, or four painters. And then you can schedule it in your uh, production schedule. So for this one, for example, Johnson is a $5,000 job. It's going to take 80 hours. And so for two painters, it's going to take five days. So I'm going to go over to my production schedule and I'm going to put it right here. Right here. right But so we got five days. So we'll make it, you know, I don't know what the schedule is. What, what was his name? Johnson, you know, Johnson, it's going to be $5,000 job and it's 80 hours. So now we know this crew is going to produce 5k this week and they're booked up for five days. And so when Mrs. Jones now books a job, I know that I can book her right here or whoever. Cool. So let's just keep moving here. By using this tool to stay organized, you're going to be able to keep track of all of your jobs and your customers. Make sure you have enough production to keep your crews busy and make sure you have enough bookings to hit your goals. And the one cool thing about this is that... Um, like, yes, you can use it as a sales tool. You can show your, your customers like your production schedule and they'll be able to see it all. But it will really help you be strategic around adding another crew. Because adding another crew can be tricky sometimes. Like, oh, do I have enough work to add another crew? I want to hire painters. I don't know if I can. But you can just start scheduling jobs for them. Say it's August 14th right now. We want to start them on September 1st. So we can start scheduling jobs for them on September 1st using this calendar, using this production schedule. And then we can see, even if we're taking jobs from other crews, how much work we have booked out if we were to add that next crew. Makes it so much easier to play chess with your business and see it from that you know 40,000 foot view. Now, these are just a couple of the dozens of templates and spreadsheets that we have, that we provide in Painter Growth. Um, this is just an example. This is kind of a screenshot of our various training modules that we help businesses with from sales to uh, marketing. We have over 11 different marketing systems, both residential and commercial. Facebook ads, recruiting, hiring, partnerships. And what I've showed you so far is just the beginning. So we're a little bit early. I went a little bit fast today. Um, just got excited, I guess. So if anyone has any questions, we could we could field a couple of questions or um, we could just let you guys book the calls. Um, let me see here. Checking out the chat here. Is it easier to find that rate on production rates or hourly? Um, so, uh, Tunisai, Tunisai, um, I'm not, so I'm talking, I guess that's back when you were, we were talking about production rates. Um, I like looking at it per job and then also per, um, if you can look on like a monthly basis, if you have good enough bookkeeping for that. So, um, on this worksheet, actually in your book job tab, as you add your book jobs here, you're going to be seeing your charge rate, um, here. 
and you really want, like I said, your charge rate to be between like 70 and $85 per hour. Um, and so that will like, uh, if you can, if you or sorry, 75 and 90 per hour, if you can keep your charge rate in your painting business between 75 and 90 per hour, that gives you enough overhead or enough margin to be able to grow, to be able to invest in marketing, to be able to invest in uh, your people, your team, and, and also have profit left over to do, to do fun stuff. Um, cool. Yeah. Chase, good stuff, man. Um, just going through here. Yeah. We can send it to your email. All right. Okay, guys. Well, I think that sounds, that seems like it. Um, hopefully you have enough time uh, or a chance here to schedule a call. Like I said, it's completely free, ton of bonuses. Would love to work with you. And, um, also if you want to check out service fusion, highly recommend, um, they have a really actually crazy, like fun, like VC backed software company that is now open to the painting space and is really helping you increase your productivity with field service management. Um, they do jobs and estimates. I think you can do payments and quoting and e-signatures and all that stuff. So, you know, if you're looking to grow and scale your business, you definitely need a professional um, uh, field service management software and they don't charge for users. You just pay the one fee for unlimited users, which I love because um, you know, I, I really experienced a lot of software bloat, especially as an online company, we pay tons of software. So, you know, if you can, uh, if you can, uh, save a little bit of money by not having to use multiple users, then, you know, that's a good thing. <laughs> cool. Um, well, Hey guys, thanks for upping on. Um, like I said, get that, get that schedule, uh, get that call scheduled. Chris, Hey, I don't know if you have a question, Chris, or are you just saying, Hey, um, but hey, thanks for uh, being here. Thanks everyone for staying until the end. And uh, yeah, book that call. We'll get you those resources. I'll send out a link and all those assets here uh, to your email shortly. So thanks a lot, guys. Talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Painter Growth Podcast. If you want to grow your painting business, go to www.paintergrowth.com or click on the top link in the description. Talk soon.